the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. It is with great joy that I welcome all of you to our, our holy celebration, as well as those who are joining us online to participate in what Jesus Christ calls in today's gospel, the hidden treasure, the treasure that is worth giving up everything to obtain and to hold on to it. And yet for the times when we failed in our vocation, discipleship, because of our sin, let us ask God for his mercy as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, 
Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, not for riches, not for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from the storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. And tonight, Deacon Elect Michael, as a farewell gift to us, will share with us, will share with us his encounter with the Lord. Have you ever thought about how you would answer God's question to Solomon? Ask me for something, anything, anything you want, and I'll give it to you. As children, at least I know for me, the question gets our imagination going. Anything? You mean like a new playground, new toys, all the cake and ice cream I could ever want? But were we kidding, even as adults, we might be tempted to answer the question like this. It'd be nice to ask God for a big house, a new car, a little more money in my bank account, things of this nature. But we know the point of the story, and it's immediately evident because God commends and congratulates Solomon for not asking for anything like this. He didn't ask for riches, success, even good health, but for wisdom, for an understanding heart. Even with the noble desire of wanting to better govern God's people. But let's not brush over this story so fast. Let's look at what happens to Solomon later on. Indeed, his wisdom makes him successful. And in fact, people from all over the world come to hear him, to seek advice from him, to hear his words of wisdom. As a result, Solomon becomes extremely wealthy and powerful. They bring a uh, tribute to him for giving the advice as a gift, as a favor. And being as wise as he is, he craftily makes alliances with all the neighboring nations, and as a result, is able to establish peace in his kingdom. And he does this in the best interest of everybody. He really wants what's best for the people in his kingdom, and because of that, a time of great prosperity and peace is ushered in for Israel. Yet, in the end, Solomon's wisdom wasn't sufficient to keep him faithful to God. He gave in to the temptations which so much wealth and power brought to him. In order to make more alliances with the neighboring countries, he accepted their women as, their, as his wives and had many wives and many children with them instead of being a good uh, and husband and father. And if that weren't enough, he gave in to their wishes to worship their foreign gods. In other words, he abandoned the very God who gave him this wisdom and all these gifts to begin with. 
So we can see that things didn't turn out so well for Solomon. Even if his initial response to God, his desire for wisdom, was honorable and laudable. So how did things go so wrong for Solomon when they started off so promising? If he was wise enough to give advice to people from all over the world, why wasn't he wise enough to remain faithful to the God who gave him all these good things? We might have an insight into the answer when St. Paul tells us that knowledge puffs up with pride, whereas love, in contrast, builds up. Knowledge is useful to a point, but it's not the end. Like any virtue or blessing, it serves its purpose. It helps make us better people. It can orient us toward God. But it's not our ultimate good. It's not the ultimate good. So let's go back for a second, put ourselves back into Solomon's place. Anything, anything you want. Getting past the more uh, juvenile answers, let's think about good things and even holy things we could ask from the Lord. Wisdom, knowledge, virtue, any kind of self-improvement. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better spouse. I want to be a better son or daughter. I want to be more honorable, uh, more reliable, more patient. These are all good things to ask from God, right? Of course they are. But as good as these things are, are they the ultimate good? Are they the best thing we could ask for? Are they really the treasure buried in the field, the pearl of great price, for which we are going to sell everything that we have? There's an interesting parallel story to that of Solomon in the Christian, uh, Christian tradition involving St. Thomas Aquinas um, in the Middle Ages. And legend has it that St. Thomas was presented with the exact same question that Solomon was presented with in today's reading. One day, as St. Thomas is praying in front of a crucifix, he hears a voice coming from the body of Jesus on the crucifix. And it says to him, Thomas, you've done so many good things for my church. You've written so well of me. What can I do? What can I give you to reward you? We might think that St. Thomas would respond by saying something related to his uh, great passion for learning and, and teaching. He might say, I want to understand better these mysteries that I've been uh, exploring my whole life. I want to be able to teach better these things that I've been teaching. Maybe I want to live out better the virtues which I've been uh, talking about so extensively. And yet, for St. Thomas, none of these good things was quite good enough. And so without missing a beat, Thomas responded to God, uh, non nisi te domine, nothing but you, Lord, nothing but you do I want. St. Thomas had it right. Ultimately, all of God's blessings, all of his good gifts, fall short of this one thing, this one thing he wants to give us, his very self, his very being. And that he gives us through his Son, who became one of us to save us. And that he gives us through his Spirit, who he poured into our hearts, and who lives with us to make us sons and daughters of God. Now all these good things, he's still willing to give us besides this one gift of himself that's most important. And that is why all things work for the good of those who love God. But that very good of us who are called according to God's purposes is nothing less than to know, to love, and to serve God himself who created us. So God invites us to share in his very life. This is the privilege of being a Christian. This is the treasure buried in the field, the pearl of great price. So let's learn to stay with St. Thomas. Let's learn to ask God for nothing but you, Lord, nothing but you, confident, confident that he'll give us everything else we need besides that. And here in this Eucharistic celebration, we encounter the self-gift of God in a way like none other. Jesus Christ is truly present, is going to give himself wholly and entirely to us in the Eucharist. And so I'd like to conclude with the words of St. Padre Pio in his prayer after communion. Stay with me, Lord, for it is you alone I look for. Your love, your grace, your will, your heart, your spirit. 
because I love you and ask no other reward but to love you more and more. Amen. Stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men of our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the one who calls us by name and leads us to life, let us bring our prayers before the Lord. For those called to minister to God's people, and for those God is currently calling to serve the church as priests and consecrated religious, may they be given the wisdom to discern the voice of God speaking to them. We pray to the Lord. For those chosen to lead, may they receive the wisdom of God to govern with justice and compassion. We pray to the Lord. For our families, especially our young people, that the kingdom of God may be present in our homes and active in our lives. We pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, alone, those living amidst violence and hatred, those needing financial help, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they have eternal peace and joy with God. We pray to the Lord. For the special intention offered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For each of us, may we faithfully support one another during this challenging time so others may see Christ in us. We pray to the Lord. Let's hear our prayer. Gracious God, in your wisdom, protect us and lead us to do your will. May the Spirit, living in our hearts, bless us with the understanding that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the greatest gift of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offering which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. From through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm -hmm. 
the mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, St. Thomas Aquinas, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Philip, our Bishop, the order of bishops or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worried that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the Holy Communion, please remain your pews. We'll bring Holy Communion to you. And for those of you who may not receive Holy Communion, just please cross your arms.
let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a few announcements. In the spirit of Eucharist, which means thanksgiving and gratitude, I would like to thank everyone who helped make our virtual vacation Bible school a huge success this past week. Thank you very much. And last Thursday, we even had tailgating dinner and live music in the parking lot. It was lots of fun. Registration is now open for religious education classes, and we have an exciting new program this year. Information and registration forms are available in the back of the church after all masses this weekend, and also available in the parish office and on the parish website. Please sign up as soon as possible. And also we're looking for volunteers to assist us with our youth program in uh, middle school and high school. So if you are interested, please reach out to our youth director, Mike Diaz, and we are surely appreciate your assistance. As a reminder, this mass is being live streaming. And at 2 p.m. we have communion service every Sunday for those who are unable to come to Mass, but they join us via internet. And also confessions are held every Saturday at 3 p.m. Now during the summer, Father Rudolfo and I, we hear them in the chapels. Tomorrow is a big day for our music director. Ansley will celebrate her, her birthday. So let us hear for Ansley and for the gift of her life. And so beautifully she's sharing the gift with us. Happy birthday. And this is the last weekend that we have our seminarians with us. I think Deacon Michael, Deacon Elect Michael and Matthew, they've done a great job. It was kind of a different summer experience as we are all living with COVID-19. But in a particular way, let us continue to pray for Deacon Elect Michael, who will be ordained on August 15th. And on August 16th, he will assist as a deacon here in our parish at the 10.30 a.m. Mass. And thank you for your beautiful preaching today. Thank you for your presence. Please remain in your pews, and the ushers will direct you out from the church at the end of the Mass. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.